the Golden State. Ranking Member Caput, uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, chime in on uh, this hearing as well. I want to begin by just echoing uh, one of the items and uh, issues that Senator Markey raised, and that's uh, utilizing resources to assist smaller cities, smaller jurisdictions that may not have, have the capacity of larger jurisdictions in uh, preparation and competing for uh, different uh, grants and other resources. So I, I won't be repetitive of his questions, just want to associate myself with his uh, concern as a priority as well. Uh, now separately, we often discuss loss of life and physical damage in the aftermath of natural disasters, but we rarely focus on the longer term economic challenges for entire communities that can persist for months or years after disaster hits. Uh, this committee has had numerous hearings and conversations about wildfires, long term drought, flooding, other types of extreme storms, routinely uh, forcing shops to close, small businesses to shut down, jobs to leave towns, and personal savings to run dry when individuals have to dip into their own pockets to cover insurance. Uh, and uh, entrepreneurs, uh, small business owners, have to rebuild. So in times of increasingly devastating natural disasters, the EDA's mission to promote a resilient economy and address rapidly evolving economic conditions, I think must prioritize disaster recovery. Again, not just short, immediate aftermath, but for the long term. It's one of the reasons I plan to introduce legislation to establish the Office of Disaster Recovery within the EDA. This office would be tasked with coordinating post-disaster economic recovery initiatives and ensure that we rebuild holistically uh, our impacted communities beyond just initial critical repairs. So Ms. Higgins and Mr. Fetcher, this sounds familiar to you because in both your written and your uh, verbal testimony earlier, uh, you reference your specific recommendations for the establishment of an EDA Bureau or Office of Disaster Resilience and Recovery. Would you each just take another minute to uh, reinforce to the committee why it's so important for Congress to do so? Beginning with Ms. Higgins. Uh, thank you, Senator. Having a robust role that is codified for EDA and disaster recovery is really important. Congress is using EDA in this role but because we haven't reauthorized and formalized it, it can be ad hoc and it can often be reactive rather than proactive. So the idea of formalizing it is really important to America's counties that for a couple reasons. It means the agency has institutional knowledge that carries on from one community's experience to other. It has leadership that has led through these difficult situations. And then quite frankly, it has good relationships and knowledge about the communities that are often on the receiving end of these considerations. EDA is also very helpful because I use an example versus the EIDL loans and SBA, very strict, quite frankly, to apply for one of those. Um, during COVID, our small businesses could not meet the requirements. But then we have other revolving loan funds that EDA allows to establish which, is, which are more attuned to these local businesses that have never, ever had to have access to capital before. So it's a great marriage between having the disaster recovery response and the long-term knowledge that EDA already has in economic assistance. Thank you. Mr. Fetzer, anything to add? Uh, Senator Padilla, yes. I would, I would agree with Commissioner Higgins' comments. Really institutionalizing it in a way that retains that knowledge and the ability to be, uh, again, proactive and not a lagging response when communities are most in need would be quite valuable. Right. Uh, now, uh, I want to make sure that I'm clear that uh, you know our main streets, our commercial corridors, and business districts, especially in smaller jurisdictions, need our ongoing attention, not just in the uh, aftermath of a disaster. You know, last Congress, Senator Wicker and I introduced the Revitalizing Small and Local Businesses Act which would provide resources for uh, nonprofit organizations to also provide operating support, technical assistance, and training to networks of business district organizations working on the ground in underserved uh, and rural communities, as well as urban neighborhoods. Uh, Ms. Higgins, how do partnerships with local organizations uh, and, non, and larger nonprofit organizations strengthen EDA's efforts to serve these business districts? 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you one example. We've got a great EDA grant that is working to enable tech um, folks from low-wage jobs to get into high-paying tech jobs. But when you're transferring people from the service economy into middle class and higher paying jobs, that transition is just not you take a class and get certified in this. Folks need have trouble getting to work. They may need social services or supportive services about how to transition into a more professional style of workforce. So in our EDA grant, we actually have nonprofit partners that are providing those wraparound services for one entire year after the person gets their first high paying job to make sure that it's a long term success. We want people lifted out of poverty with EDA assistance. But we want them to stay out of poverty, not falling back because this is their first time in a different sort of workplace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair.